John Gill's exposition of the entire Bible, verse by verse, from Genesis 1-1 through the end of Revelation. This is brought to you by Discovering the Scriptures, being read by Dr. Peter John. Currently, we are in Revelation. Reading first, Introduction to Revelation. That this book was written by the Apostle and Evangelist John is clear not only from the express mention of his name and from his office, a servant of Jesus Christ, Revelations 1.1, but also from the character this writer gives of himself, Revelations 1.2, as being an eyewitness of the essential Logos, or Word of God, and who bore a faithful record of him as such, as John did in his Gospel in a very peculiar and remarkable manner, and from this writer's being in the Isles of Patmos when he wrote, Revelations 1.9. For what other John can this be said? To which may be added the testimonies of the ancient writers, as Justin Martyr, who lived within 50 years of the Apostle, as he was the disciple of Polycarp, and hearer of the Apostle, and Clemens Alexandrus, Tertullian, Origen, and others. Footnote from the reader. These are the most ancient church fathers, writers that we have. And the footnote. Who ascribe it to him. It was the most monu monstrously stupid notion of Dionysus, of Alexandria, C-A-I-U-S, mentions that it was written by C-E-R-I-N-T-H-U-S, the heretic, when his heresies concerning the divinity and humanity of Christ were most strongly refuted in it. What seems to have led to such a thought is that the account of the thousand years reign and the descent of the new Jerusalem from heaven seemed to favor the Judaism of this man and his carnal notions of an earthly paradise, whereas they have no such tendency. And as for its being written by another John, who is said to be presbyter at Ephesus, after the apostle, it is not certain there ever was such a man. And if there was, he must be too late to be the writer of this book, nor to him can the above characters agree. What is observed in favor of him, the penman of this book is called, in the title, John the Divine, and not the evangelist or apostle, who will do him no service. For to whom does the character so well agree as to the evangelist, John, who wrote the divine things in so divine a manner, and particularly concerning the divinity of Christ? Hence this book was sometimes called Divinity. Besides, the title of the book is not original, but is what has been affixed to it by others, and varies. For in the C-O-M-P-L-U-T-E-N-S-I-A-N edition, it runs this, The Revelation of the Holy Apostle and Evangelist John the Divine. In the Vulgate Latin version, it is called the, the Apocryphus of the Blessed John the Apostle. In the Syriac version, the Revelation, which was made to John the Evangelist. And in the Arabic version, the Vision of John, the Apostle and Evangelist. To it, the Apocalypse, all which knowledge the Apostle John to be the writer of it and show the sense of the ancients concerning it. Nor is it of any moment what is alleged that this writer makes mention of his name several times, whereas it was usual with John, both in his gospel and epistles, to conceal his name, since there is a wide difference between writing a history and epistles to friends and prophecy, which requires the author's name, on whom the authority and truth of the prophecy greatly depend. And so likewise the disagreement of style observed in this book with the other writings of John was no force in it since the 
prophetic style is always different from a historical to an epistolary one. And yet, after all and many things, there is an agreement. John is this, as in other writings, speaks of Christ as the Word and the Son of God and under the character of the Lamb. And likewise, the following passages may be compared together as Revelation chapter 1, verse 2, with John 19, 35, and 1 John 1, 1, with Revelations 1, 5, and 1 John 1, 7. All which, being observed, there is no room to doubt, neither of the writer nor the authority of the book, especially when the agreement of the doctrine contained in it with other parts of the scripture, the majesty of its style, and above all, the many prophecies of things to come to pass, several of which have already been fulfilled, are considered, and though it was called in question and rejected by some her- heretical men, because some things in it do not suit with their tenets, yet we have not the least reason to doubt of its being authentic, who have lived to see so much of it already accomplished, and which would come from no other but God. As for the time of its writing, that is not agreed upon all of hands, the place where seems to be the Isle of Padovas, but yet some question. Some think it was written in the times of Claudius Caesar before the destruction of Jerusalem. In the title of the Syriac version, the revelation is said to be made by John in the Isle of Padovas, into which he was cast by Nero Caesar. But the more commonly received opinion is that he had this vision there at the latter end of Domitian's reign by whom he was there banished about the year 95 or 96. But he, this be as it will, the book is certainly of divine authority and exceeding useful and instructive and contains in it the most monument and important doctrines of the gospel concerning the trinity of the person of the Godhead, the deity and sonship of Christ, the divinity and personality of the Spirit, the offices of Christ, the state and condition of man by nature, justification, pardon, reconciliation by the blood of Christ, and it recommends the several duties of religion and encourages to the exercise of every grace and gives a very peculiar, particular account of the rise, power, and fall of Antichrist, and the state of the Church of Christ in all the periods of time to the end of the world. And though it is written in an uncommon style, yet may be understood by the use of proper means, as by prayer and meditation, by comparing it with other prophetic writings in the history of past times, by which many things in it will appear to have had their accomplishment and ought to be observed that it is a revelation and not a hidden thing, that it is now not a sealed book, but an open one, and that such are pronounced blessed that read and hear it and observe the things in it, Revelations 1.3, and which is no small encouragement to attempt an explanation of it. End of the introduction of Revelation by John Gill, being brought to you by Discovering the Scriptures, being read by Dr. Peter John.